Gallery has been in business for 33 years. We were uh, formed in 1988. We're in the side of space, which is on Caston and Albion Street in Mendocino. We're open every day, 11 to 4. And Deborah Lennox, and I'm going to show you around. artists that are local, one artist that comes up from the Bay Area, and we take turns gallery sitting. We share the uh, responsibilities of paying the bills, we should be clean, we do everything ourselves. There's no middleman, there's no gallery owner. We all are uh, on our board of directors, we're incorporated, so we're each a director and have responsibilities while we gallery sit. But being in Mendocino in particular, and nature, be in nature anywhere, but being in Mendocino, we have some specific art, uh, specific inspiration. People come from all over the world to paint the scenes of this town and the ocean. And so you, and you can kind of see this is similar to the flavor of what people paint, but every one is different because the light changes. The ocean, for instance, is never the same. And I've seen um, people come to the art center as artists in residence, and they're doing something you know, abstracted and interesting. And by the end of their time here, it, you start to see forms of barnacles or urchins. Since she's been here, we've been seeing these uh, these seals and these otters have come in since she's joined us. And she just happens, think about Pat, is that she's so patient that she is, ends up at the right place at the right time to catch these images that um, really capture the essence of the, the humor and the personalities of the animals that she's photographing. So she's, um, that's a definite, a, dis, a definite influence from being here in, in Mendocino. Bill Zaka, the founder of the Art Center, had been coming up here from Marin, I guess, and he fell in love with Mendocino. It was a, a defunct logging town super cheap building. They bought a house and then when they bought the property that's now the current art center, it was a mansion that had burned down and I think they were going to make a trip, some trailer park people were looking at it. And so he rallied some friends to get some money together to buy it to make this art center. Then he proceeded to ask his friends that were artists in San Francisco to come up and do classes and a lot of them came up and stayed or would come up and buy houses and live here. So Emily Packard, who uh, did, did the um, wood blocks that I really love, was one of those artists. Her studio was over on the other side of Lucaya Street. But she, she got together with the artists at the time, and they wanted to save Mendocino, so they, they lobbied and created the Headlands Park and made this into a national historical town. The artists were the ones that saved it from being totally dead. So over the years, we've collected, people have come and gone from this group, but right now our focus is to try to keep a diversity of um, media, really. Shanti Benoit paints in water, watercolors, oils, and right, lately she's been doing collages in, with her friend Sev Ikes. So the collages are the most recent version of what Shanti does, but Stephen Garner over here has multi-talents as well. He does drawing and painting, mostly watercolors. We have several photographers. I'll start with Sharon Garner, who is our, um, she's also our secretary. Sharon does many different techniques and she'll travel and learn a new technique. Lynn uh, Zickerman is multi-talented. She's really on a tear with these flowers, with the uh, fabric mm. as, a, as a multimedia. David Cross is one of our early, early members. He's been here a really long time. He's our, I call him the waves master <laughs> because his waves particularly capture that that backlit color, this is my favorite color, so I always <laughs> gravitate right towards David's. Karen Bowers, who is our current president, is also a multimedia person, so she's currently showing watercolors, expressionist, abstracted watercolors are mostly of coastal um, rocks and water, and they're, they're very popular. Box Space is, an, is another Yes, he's going to be a, he's now a member, he's going to be moving into the other room, but he's had this um, wonderful space for his large sculptures, and 
we don't have too many people in town that do nice big sculptures, but Bob has multi-talents from the wood to the bronze, lots of bronze. For the oldest piece on this wall is this Mendocino Starry Night. I started that as a plein air piece and I just, plein air and uh, Venus was coming up over the horizon and so I wanted to celebrate that looking over Mendocino and this is from a friend's uh, porch looking out over Mendocino. These are lino cuts with, it's called chincale, when you add another mm. type of paper onto your printmaking. I cut a, a piece of linoleum and roller it with black and then press the uh, paper onto it. So then I, I took that whole, that same image and started putting it on boards. And I also was doing, I did a class on making um, paper with the, the marbled paper. And so I started playing with printing the moon on marbled paper. Joe DeVivier is our vice president, and he does all of these. Some of them are so small, you gotta get up really close, but they're very local to certain beaches or certain places in his garden. So for mm -hmm. instance, these mm -hmm. lilies are in a water, um, a big barrel of water in his garden, and he has a glass going through, so he can actually look at the underside of the lilies. It's pretty amazing. Karen Reynolds is another multi-talented, different media artists. Sev is a longtime Mendocino icon. She's done so much, so many pieces for the film festival, the music festival, and she's very popular with her whimsical mm -hmm. art in the gardens. So we've been selling her posters, and then she has original, little original collages like Shanti was doing, and now she's doing cards as well. If we look for different kinds of art, to complement what we have. We don't want to have 10 plein air painters. So Rachel has a more abstracted uh, way of looking at everything and there's these sand dollars are, are real. So there's a collage montage element going in there. Lynn Butler has been with us from the other gallery as well. She's a guest as well, but she does these beautiful women inspired images on pottery. Shanti Ball today, so she's our travel photographer. And her um, two trips that stick out on this particular wall is one in one to India when she was the photographer with her brother was making a, a movie in India. So she was the photographer for the movie set and she has some real bright imagery from India there. And then she went on a sacred trips, sacred journeys trip to uh, Europe and went to different sacred sites in England, Wales, and uh, France, and that's our last artist that I wanted to talk about is our featured artist, Mary Anderson. This is our last featured artist show on this wall. It's going to be given over to members later, but Mary is a printmaker, and she also does enameled uh, copper bowls, so she has a multi-faceted talent stream, <laughs> but um, at, at monthly, we would switch from one of the artists in the co-op would be fe called our featured artist and have a special show on this wall, which was going to be moving to that wall over there. And then we get, we write a publicity and usually when COVID is over, we will have a second Saturday uh, event and we'd have wine and snacks and the place fills up with people and we all enjoy the art. So I'm hoping that we get back to that by the end of the year or so, maybe, and everything gets gets better and more open and art starts flowing again. But in the meantime, we're all hunkered down in our studios, cranking out art, keeping the, art set, the uh, artist co-op open for people to come in and enjoy. The traditional gallery, they, they have exclusive rights, so you can really, own, most of them you can only show through their gallery. They take 50% of your, of your income and then they want you to produce what they can sell. So there's a little bit of a oh. more pressure to something over and over and over again whereas here you can do whatever you want look we have committees we have a guest artist uh, membership committee and that head of that is Mary Anderson who is picking people to come in and we have guests come in for two months at a time and after they've been here they can decide for instance Bob has been a guest a couple of times but once they've been in here and the artists have gotten to know them a little bit we invite them to be members if there's a space for it. We would annually have a friends show and they, one of the artists invited me to show with the, with the co-op. And there's something about taking your work 
there's still a good posse of artists in the co on the coast that can maintain this kind of a gallery. But in the meantime, there other galleries have, have uh, sprung up that have been here through the years, and they'll, some of them will come and some of them will go. But I say there's usually at least six galleries in town, and that's because Mendocino is considered an artist destination. Even now, it's a, um, well, even with COVID, <laughs> the art center is closed, but we have people come in here and go, oh, thank goodness we can come and see some art. Because art, it speaks to your heart, and it, you know, it's something that I think is really important to our, you know, our mental well-being, and it's important to have people come in and have a moment where they're not what, looking at their phones or listening to TV or something that's feeding things to them specific, whereas here you'll, I think when you look at art, you sometimes go inside and you dream, 